burning and it's red and orange and yellow and small and billow and everywhere and you can't breathe. And then there's this little blue bird that's just running back and forth really between the lake and this fire and a drop of water in its beak trying to quench this fire. I want you to open your eyes. This is the forest, our world right now, income inequality, climate change, preposterous ways in which we produce and consume and create waste upon waste upon waste. Eight years ago, I was that little bluebird, a wannabe lawyer at a university trying to lead a youth movement and make people in Pakistan think about all the ways we can do something to bring about a change. It is for this reason that in 2013, I started the Social Innovation Lab, along with some of my friends, trying to see how we could bring young people together to solve some of these problems. What we're trying to do is build a world where these change makers, along with partner organizations, people like you, can come together and tackle some of our greatest challenges in the world through social innovation. Now we do a bunch of things. We do social enterprise incubation, we do advocacy work, we do consulting where we get a ka -ching. <laughs> A little bit about one part of it, Hatchery. The Hatchery is a social enterprise incubator, the very first one for Pakistan, that we created in 2013. At the Hatchery, we take young hatchlings, young people, marginalized communities, women, take them from the very idea stage of a business all the way to market access, launching those businesses and getting funders and investors to support them. One of our hatchlings is Josefa. Josefa saw his mom all his life feeding people in his community, irrespective of caste, creed, color, religion. Josefa would have food with strangers every day growing up. When he came to Lums, one of the most prestigious universities in Pakistan, he wanted to do the same. And so he connected restaurants that had excess food with communities that needed that food every night. When he came to us, he said, look, Mariam, I'm going to graduate soon. And I'm going to end up in this corporate job. And I don't know how this work is going to continue. He said, why do you have to do a job? He said, how do I make money? He said, why can't you make money doing this? And so at the hatchery, we helped Josefa find multiple revenue streams for using, for taking excess food, giving it to communities that need them, but not just giving it for free, giving it at a low cost rate, so that to us to give them their dignity, while also giving Josefa his salary at the end of the month. <coughs> Josefa is one of a hundred social entrepreneurs, actually 400 plus social entrepreneurs that we've worked with over the last five years. These 400 plus entrepreneurs have together ended up giving us a hundred social enterprises that have to date benefited over 4.2 million people around the world. But that's not where it ends. We realized pretty early on that there are many Josefas around the world. And so now what we're doing is we're finding people who are working on the same problems around the world. We're creating dots between these guys, right? Creating this set of clusters around the world and then encouraging people like you to come and support those clusters. I want you to close your eyes again. And we're back in that forest and that fire and that one bird. And now it's a thousand. And now it's 10,000. I want you to open your eyes. Will you join my bluebird talk? <laughs>